together and as we continue our study through the book of First Corinthians here, we just have a, a heart of understanding, ears to hear, and, and understand exactly the issues going on here as far as the divisions. Um, and in the coming weeks, as we look at the issues of baptism and the preaching of the cross and the power that is in that. Um, and that the power is not in any water ceremony, but in the actual yes. historical events uh, of the cross when we put our faith and, and our trust in what happened there on the cross. We do thank you for your love and for your grace. In your son's precious name, amen. 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 Okay, so we, we started there last time. I know you guys weren't here last time, but but there, there there's this issue in, in, there was a lot of divisions. I mean, you know, it's funny. We, we look out at, at, at our nation today politically and, and, and morally and even religiously, yes. and we get all upset and, say, and wring our hands. And, oh, how could it be like this? Have that's the way it was in Paul's day. Yeah, it was, that, that's the way it was in Paul's day. And, you know... This is kind of like denominationalism. I'm of Paul, I'm yeah. of Paulus, I'm of Cephas. Cephas yeah. there, of course, is Peter. And I have Christ. And it's interesting, when you look at that, Paul taught the dispensation of grace. Cephas and Christ, the gospel of the kingdom. But Apollos kind of taught both. Yeah. At first he taught, taught the, the gospel of the kingdom, and then he understood that that was not the gospel that for the people he was preaching to today. So then he became one of one of Paul's uh, uh Something that Paul really depended on, and and taught and taught a lot, and and we we can look at that. But it, it's very interesting. He goes on and, and he says, you know, don't. In verse thirteen, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for for you? Or are you baptized in the name of Paul? Now those are important questions because he brings up is that's what I want to look at here. Is is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified? No. Were we baptized in the name of Paul? You know, yeah. and, and and it's interesting because if you guys haven't found it, you will soon find it that you will be accused of worshiping Paul. Oh, that's oh, yeah. already happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you think you think Paul's your savior? And it, it's a fundamental knee jerk reaction, but that's what you. And this is exactly that's the attack. What's going on here? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Totally. And, and so you had people. So you had you had. Uh, well, let's just say by the time when when Paul's referencing Apollos here, it, it's in re- regards to. The gospel of the grace of God. So you've got two people, people that are following two different, two different gospels, and even between the people that are following the gospel of the grace of God, they're hung up on the personalities. It does appear that Paul was not a great speaker. <clears throat> I mean, th- you just think about Paul. He, he was, uh, you know, he, I, I'm in my mind when he was a Pharisee. You know, he wears purple robes and he's ro- walked through town, and and all the Jewish moms would say, "Boy, I hope my little boy gets to grow up and he's just like Saul." And but by this time, right? He, he's he's hungry. He's been shipwrecked. He's been stoned literally to death, um, and recovered. It appears his eyes aren't very good. He talks to the Galatians about maybe they, they would help or Philippians with the help with his eyesight. They give him his eyes, and he doesn't seem like he, they say you know you, you, your letters are weighty, but you're not much of a speaker. And he praised for utterance to speak, so he probably wasn't very like bold or like. Yeah, and you know. and, and and so, but it's very interesting in, in all of that. He does have something to say about that. So look over at chapter 4, verse 16. He says, Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Mm -hmm. And look over at chapter 11 and verse 1. It's a very powerful verse. He says, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Mm-hmm. And, you, you know, one of the things, too, when you talk to people, and, and well, one of the questions I always I always ask is, well, let me ask you something. Who's your apostle? And nobody can tell you. Nobody can tell you. And people will say, a lot of people will come down with Peter, but a lot of people will go over to Hebrews and say, well, Jesus is. And you, you go over and you show them, look over at Romans 11, show them Romans 11. Verse 13. For I speak to you Gentiles as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify and magnify mine office. In, in, in Romans 15, he, he takes you that know, real quick, real quick, just look at that. Romans 15, verse 8. He says, now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm. And by the way, it does not say to fulfill there. It says to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. All those things he did just confirmed the promises that were made. Okay. That, so Paul says, 
that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision. Jump down to verse 16. He says that I should be the minister of who? Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being made sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Paul, when he says, follow Christ as I do, the comparison there would be to Paul, to Peter. Don't follow Peter, don't follow follow Christ as Peter did. One of the things I used to do in the truck stuff, because a, a trucker would come in, we'd have 45 minutes, we'd maybe never see him again, right? They're a trucker, they're here, and then they're out again. And we a very common lesson, and everybody that was in the room could do it, exactly knew what I was going to do when I did it. But we would list all the things that Jesus or Peter said to do. And we would look, come in them when they'd list everything that Paul said <clears throat> to do. We talked about it earlier, right? Sell all that you have, or if you're, if you're uh, rich, be ready to distribute. Yeah. Are all of your sins forgiven, or do you need to forgive. ask for, forgive other people? Yeah. And, and we, we'd make a list of these. And then I would look at the people and say, okay, do them both. Yeah. And people would just go, <laughs> well, I can't. And then they would say, well, it doesn't mean, I go, well, let, 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 let's just assume it does mean what it says. And then we'd go look at these verses. Yeah. Follow Paul. Follow Paul as Christ did. And boy, that would that would be impactful to people because they would see the difference. And, you know, a lot of times, too, not, not so much with pastors, but with, with just ordinary, what we call lay people, right? Just those of us that are just out here. We have a good... We have a right heart, right? The, the, what's the one thing a Christian wants to defend? The Bible. Yeah. There's contradictions in the Bible. That's the atheist attack, right? That's the world attack. Yeah. Well, I can show you all these different... And what's the Christian's response? No, there's not. It's the <laughs> perfect word of God. It's not because they're evil people. They just don't know what to do with those different. So they allegorize yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, then, yes, and, and, and if it has yeah. to be allegorized, then you do need somebody to tell you how the allegory is supposed to be interpreted. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and and there are things that are allegorical. Paul talks about things that are allegorical, but the Bible is true. Yeah. And so if you can if if you can get people to just take, kind of take a breath and say, yes, I, I understand why a person thinks this is a contradiction, but they're two different messages sent to yeah. two different people at two different times with two different hopes. Yeah. And then people kind of catch a breath. And say, okay, there are, and, and, and the people go, well, I, you know, I don't know. Okay, so ask them about the dietary laws. Yeah. Adam and Eve are vegetarians. Marriage are vegan. Okay. <laughs> he tells Noah, if you can catch Bambi, you can eat Bambi. <laughs> he tells Moses, no shellfish, no pigs, no bacon. He tells Paul, eat whatever you want, just give thanks for it. Yeah. Those are different. Yeah. Those yeah. are th those are completely different. Paul says yeah. you can eat a pig as long as and have bacon and and a lobster as long as you're thankful for it. That is the direct opposite what God told Moses. Instruction changes. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. For be, because there's a reason. Yeah. And then people go back. Well, that was God keeping Israel healthy. No, it was yeah. to point out the difference between yeah. clean and unclean. It was. Yeah. It was a spiritual lesson of there God, were God's people, the Gentiles were not God's Except people. Except apart yeah. from the right. Gentiles. There was the allegory. There, yeah. it, was, it was a real thing, yeah. but it yeah. was meant to teach a lesson. And, see, and yeah. then again, that's what's happened. You talked about the Pharisees and the Sadducees earlier mm -hmm. in Jesus' day. What was the problem with the Pharisees and the Sadducees? They were re religious people. Yeah. They thought that doing this stuff yeah. meant something. So when they, when, when they didn't eat the bacon like the, Gen, like the heathen Gentiles did, they thought that did something. It was the doing yeah. it by faith. Right. You know, you think about when Jesus uh, cast out the swines there. And, 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 you know, why were there pigs there to anyhow? Peter yeah. goes to the tanner. Yeah. Why would Peter go to a tanner? What, what, what were the Jews doing with pigs? Yeah. Anyhow. So, I mean, yeah, that's a thought, uh, story for a different day. So yeah. Paul starts this book saying, hey, you know, that your divisions and your contentions, they're wrong. Oh, by the way, though, you do need to follow me. Yeah. It, 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 it's a powerful thing when he, he, he chastises yeah. this for him. And he says, "But there is somebody you're supposed to follow." Yeah, I like like uh, like uh, you know with our, our church we were at. They bring up the divisions in the Corinthian church to, to, to say we we need to have unity, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so they you know, talk about First Corinthians chapter one there, but they would never say, "Well, well Paul had had had, had a solution for the divi divisions. Follow me." Right. He says it two times, yes, you know, two times. in chapter four and then chapter eleven, and That'll you know, give Philippians. You unity. 
Yeah, yeah, but they never would, 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 would say that Paul had a solution to the divisions in the church. You're right. Just totally gloss over that, that right. part and of it. You know? Right, because you go to you go to <clears throat> Philippians, and that was the issue. The yeah. work of the ministry was getting done, but they were fighting. Yeah. He tells them, I want you to be of one mind. Mm -hmm. You go over to Colossians. I think I read it Sunday. You go over yeah. to Colossians. He says, I want them to be knit together so they're of one mind and one yeah. accord. Yeah. That's when right? there's power. In, yeah. Where does that come from? It doesn't come from what I think the Bible means. No. It comes from Paul says. Yeah, exactly. Now, yeah. now th there is an issue that, well, how do you apply that in your life? Because Paul, we live in a time of grace. There are, there are things that are clear. In this book, don't sleep with your mother-in-law or your, your stepmom. That's very <laughs> clear. He's very clear about fornication. And, and those, yeah. there, are, there, are, there are things that are very clear. There's, there's no interpretation needed. Right. But there are many things that the Bible is silent on or the Bible says that gives you the general outline. And then you go figure out in your life how that works. You know, think about the things he says about, about the work relationship and the family relationship. He gives you some broad strokes, but expects you to go figure out how to, how to make that work in the situation in which you find yourself. And unfortunately, what happens, this is what happens almost 100% when grace churches have a problem, is they take Paul's which are the commandments of the Lord, and they turn them into a list of do's and don'ts, right? The, the issue in the workplace is how you treat one another in relationship to if, if Jesus was your boss or if Jesus was your employee, right? Not that your boss is God. You don't treat your boss like God. That's not what he's saying. He's saying you need to esteem your boss. And, he, and it's, it's amazing. There's no loopholes. We talk about this all the time. Yeah. It doesn't say unless your boss is a bozo. It doesn't say unless your employee is a bozo. Um, and, and you know, if, if, if you have, a, if any man have a quarrel with you, it doesn't say if you're, right, if you're right, you don't have to do this, <laughs> which is what we, the way we read a lot of these verses, don't we? We say, yeah, but yeah. we're Stegen talks about it all the time. Yeah. The yeah, buts. And so that's where, that, that's where maturity comes in. That's where not being a babe in crisis, take what Paul says. And then in, in the situation in what my, I find myself, what does the mind of Christ look like in here? You know, we, we you, you hear this almost every time when we have a conference, and it, it's it's true. Those of us that teach, it's not our job to tell anybody how to live their life, which is so different than what religion tells you, right? Yeah. Our job is to tell you how to get the profit out of this book that God put in it, so that you can apply it to your life. Yeah. Um, you guys have heard me. I, I wear out this example, but now I can change it a little bit. You two are about to get married. You might make decisions early in your marriage that are completely different than we make after 33 years of marriage that both might be in the Word of God, in, in the will of God, just because there's, there's a different maturity, there's a different understanding, there's a different understanding of how that, that dynamic, and, and, and you need to be careful that it's not just, well, hello. It, it, it's not just this, the issue of, okay, let's take what Paul says, and then it's a rigid commandment. Some things are very clear. Yeah. But they're, for the he most part, needs to he, he's telling you. God's will, which right. is in the husband's situation to love your wife as Christ loves It's not the church. question, what is the will of God for me in this situation? It's, I know what the will of God is. He wrote it out in his book. I need, I need to up, quit, up, quit thinking about what I want and apply the will of God in his, out of his word rightly divided yeah. to this situation. And, and that's where so many people get, get confused or fall down. Um, yeah. Oh, Michael with the, the verses the other day. Okay, so where are we then? Um, is, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name? You know, part of this division was, is Christ divided? That's a great, that's a, a great question. Um, and you do see that, that, that issue come up so often that Christ is not divided. Look over yeah. at chapter 12. And these, these net, you, you might put a marker in chapter 12 and in chapter 4 of Ephesians, where we're going to go next, because we're going to be right back here shortly in, in a different context. But just listen to the way he, he says it. Look at verse 12. For as the body is one. Which number? Uh, chapter 12, verse 12. Hmm. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. He's not, Christ not divided. For by one spirit we're all baptized into one body. 
whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we bond or free, have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. See, uh, Christ is not divided. The body of Christ is, is not divided. We each member has 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 a role to play, if I can put it in, in that in that manner. Um, you know, again, we just came off conference, so we saw that. You know, John and I had a role to play, and and you look at the speakers like like they do it all. You know what? We pretty much just show up and teach. There, there's all that stuff that was going on in the background. There were people there were people that missed lessons because they were in the kitchen preparing stuff, right? What's that? That's the body of Christ working together. Mm -hmm. It's not divided. It doesn't mean that person that nobody saw that was in the kitchen is any less important. I would argue that person's more important. Mm -hmm. Right? Get, getting that physical nourishment. Okay? Look over at Ephesians 4. Uh, Ephesians 4 verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering and forbearing one another in love, for and endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, is even as you are called, and one hope about your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. The issue is Christ is not divided. There's only one body today. And we look out and, you know, it doesn't matter if it's Jew or Gentile, you know, free or bond. I mean, it's kind of an interesting, we don't talk that way anymore, but it, it, our, our version of that would be employer-employee type, type, type situation. Um, um, the issue is not the personalities. The issue is the doctrine. The issue is the doctrine being taught. And and as we, we saw Two is the, the issue of uh, well, you're in Ephesians. Look over to Ephesians uh, two. And by two, I mean four again. Uh, again, verse twelve. Well, what is what is the what is the purpose of a unified of, of the one body uh, in, in that local assembly? Verse twelve. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You know, so often we think about these things in relationship. Well, yeah, we need to get along and, 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 and there shouldn't be any, any dissension and everything. But we forget that there's a reason for that. So that the work of the ministry can get done. You need perfected saints, mature saints, so that the work of the ministry can get done. What's the work of the ministry? The edification of the saints. Okay, That's the role of that local church. Now then, then the locals, the, then the, the the edified saints are to go out into the community, and share the gospel. Now, you know, it, it's not necessarily the 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 church's role in the immediacy to share the gospel. Again, though they should every time. The the local assembly is to be the pillar and ground of the truth to get the saints edified to go out into their neighborhoods and their their communities and where they work and where they go to school to share the gospel so that they're prepared. And then bring them, bring them back to the local assembly, right? Yeah. Let's be honest. Very few unbelievers walk into a church with the intent of getting saved, yeah. right? Most people will do it over uh, in, in a work environment, in a family environment, where somebody over a kitchen table sits down and, and loves them enough to share the word of God and, and present the gospel to them out of a, out of a Bible, right? And then you bring that person to church. Well, if, if for, to share the gospel, what do you got to do? You got to have yeah, some maturity. You got to know how to do it. Right? What's, mm -hmm. Where do you learn that? In the local assembly. Yeah. Now, again, people hear you say, so, so you're saying the local the yeah. local church shouldn't be out sharing the gospel. No, they, they should. Yeah. But they understand, you understand their main focus is the people that are, for lack of a better word, members, that, that are regular attendees that are the congregants, need to get edified to go do the work. Exactly. It's called the work of the ministry. Yeah. And again, it's not a chore. You, you're self-employed, yeah. right? You, yeah. you own your business, right? Yeah. Okay. So you go to work every day. But and sometimes it's a chore. But a lot of times when you own your business, it's work. But it's something you enjoy to do because it's yeah. for you. So we don't always need to associate work with a chore or badness. Right. You know, sometimes the work can be something enjoyable. You know, yeah. it's uh, if you've ever shared the gospel with somebody and, and they respond positively, man, that's a thrill. That, that that that's a for lack of a. I'm sorry, but that that's a high that can't be replaced by anything, right? Yeah. And uh, it has eternal value. Yeah. Yeah, well, April and I have been blessed enough to be in the room when our kids got saved. 
due to the great work of our grandparents. But yeah, that's a that's a great thing. But it it comes from perfected saints to do that to get up there. Okay. Yeah. The, the, there, there, there's no division now. The reality is though. You don't like everybody that you have to work with, and they don't like, and and you are not everybody else's favorite. They don't all think you're as wonderful as your wife does, <laughs> right? And I know that's hard for us to believe that maybe not everybody thinks we're as great as, as we do. But he's not even talking about that. He's talking about that issue: esteem others better than yourselves to get the work of the ministry done. And it, it and it's not, it, it's not just a mental issue; it's a heart issue. Yeah. It's not just plugging your okay. I got to go deal with this guy for an hour. I'll find a way to get through it. it, it it's well, not God that. It's, work in it's you okay. Yeah. That's a fellow member of the body of Christ yeah. that has value, and we're, yeah. we have, we have some project. We have some whatever it, whatever it is, and, and, and we're gonna. I'm gonna set aside my ego and, and, and my personality, not my personality, but my ego, and, and we're gonna come together and we're gonna enjoy our time because we're doing it for the Lord to bring glory to the Lord, and, and it's a hard issue. You know, it's so you know. Sometimes we all know, right? You go to work and you kind of. Mm, <laughs> it's not it, that's it's where it's different thing. too you know at home depot and i and i tell people this you know i i'm working for the lord and everything i do and all the customers i come involved with it's not for me and it's not for my boss i'm not doing it for the little bit that i get paid it is my platform to be a light in the world right and if you think of it's not like oh i do or don't like my boss or i do or don't like what i'm doing if you're just Doing everything for the glory of the Lord and whatever that work is, you're doing it for the right reasons. Right, exactly. Yeah. It, it, it becomes yeah. a heart issue. Yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 understand again. Now we're talking about what's the will of God when I go to work at when, when you go to work at Home Depot. It's the same as when you go to work yeah. and you go to school it's or you're same. knocking on doors or when I go to work or or when I don't go to work. Um, but it's it's, it's all the, the will same. of God is yeah. the same. Um, don't glory in your flesh. Glory yeah. in the Lord. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right, well, let's start this issue on baptism, which is an interesting thing here. And we'll get pretty deep into it because... It's important. <clears throat> it, it's important. And, and I always... I kind of give this example on some of these things where where most people that are hearing me or listening have, have an understanding that water baptism, the, ceremony, the ceremonial water baptism is not for the church today. It's not for us today. It, but there comes an understanding too of understanding why. Well, my dad years ago worked with the Federal Reserve, and he worked in the counterfeit division. They didn't show him counterfeit bills; they showed him real bills, yeah. so that he could detect what account he said. The, yeah. the, so he knew exactly what a real bill looked like. So when a, a counterfeit came along, and this is long before computers, <laughs> but yeah. but he, he he could identify it. So we'll look at some of this today. We don't have a whole lot of time. We'll look at some of this today. But then I also want to go back and see what was baptism. Mm -hmm. Because if you understand what baptism was, you'll understand what, what the church does, to, what, what, what religion does today is not what they were doing. Yeah. And it it is not, don't fall for this, well, it's just a New Testament ordinance. No, no, it goes all the way back to Leviticus, and it had a purpose. Oh, yeah. And you can see that purpose work out in the healing ministry that Jesus had in the Gospels has to do with yeah. what God God wanted Israel to be or, or designed them to be, that nation of priests. Yeah. Yeah. The, through which the, the blessings would flow. Yeah. So first one you need, you need to acknowledge because is is Paul baptized people. Yeah. You can so see it right, right here. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, you, you depending on how you want it, that the house of Stephanus, you know, yeah. if Stephanus was a rich dude, that could have been fifty people. Right? The house in that day would have been the family and then his servants and then his family. who knows how many people that was. I'm going to say there's 50, 75 people potentially right here that he lists. Um, and then he says, and besides that, I don't know. Really, it wasn't even such yeah. an important deal to him that he didn't seem to remember. Right. Now, when we come to this too, let's not forget that the gospel of the doctrine of inspiration. Every word here, even when Paul says, well, I don't remember if I did anybody else, is written by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit yeah. through the, 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 the personality or whatnot of the individual writers. Paul is still writing a letter. To people he cares about. He's, the Holy Spirit is working through him though. To write this. Okay, The Holy Spirit knows exactly. I can tell you. How many people Paul baptized. Yeah. So the question is. Well why did Paul stop baptizing? Or, why, or I guess the, the, the first one. 
Why did Paul baptize? Uh, because then, see, well, um, he need to he needed to um, show his um, authority as. An apostle. Well, baptism wouldn't necessarily do that. The signs of the apostles, his ability to heal, his ability to speak in tongues, his, his that that would be that would be the sign of an apostle, right? Yeah. Now, the apostles, you're right. The twelve apostles were sent to baptize. That, that really? that's that's very clear. But that wouldn't have given him the authority. He would have been able to baptize. People would have would, would have subjected themselves to his water baptism. Because he had the signs of the apostles, it, it would have the sign. Yes, Paul, you have the authority. That will that way way to work out, right? Wouldn't even to just to think about it today. Even today, and again, water baptism is not for us. But when you when the church is baptized, for the most part, they don't have the people sitting in the congregation. It's the pastor who has the authority in quotes, right, to baptize. Okay, that was the program. Yeah, that was all he knew. And we remember because he was a Pharisee, Paul. Right, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So, so that, and he's a Jew. That's the other yeah. thing to remember. So if 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 it's a New Testament ordinance, why did Paul know about it? Because he wasn't really part of the New Testament, as the so-called New Testament people call, it, until much later, right after after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So if he knew about it, it it must have been a historical issue in the nation Israel. Right, but he just did a couple people where. The apostles, they were doing tens of thousands of people. Yeah, Paul was not good. Did, Paul was did, not a good baptizer, by the way. He just did a couple. Right. Yeah. Um, well, and, yeah. and then he received a, you know, I mean, part of that, he was baptized by Ananias, right? Mm -hmm. um, most of the people that I see, you know, except maybe Gaius and maybe the the Philippian jailer, well, which we don't really even know if he was a Jew or not. You know, yeah. there was some law and, you know, the... Philippi that said Jews could not be jailers. It, it doesn't say, but I think Gaius might have been a Gentile. But but most of the people that Paul baptized were Jews. But he received further revelations from 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 Jesus Christ. You know that that something happened where he was baptized. He was given more and more revelations yeah. that showed clarity. Then he stopped. Yeah. So why 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 did he stop? Like you're asking, but I you know probably from further. So go look at Acts 26. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, exactly. Go look at Acts 26. Yeah. <clears throat> Acts 26 and verse 16. Now this is Paul <clears throat> giving Paul's account of what happened on the road to Damascus. So this is Acts 26, but Paul's talking about what happened back there in Romans 9. And so this is Paul's I, I issue, a thought of what happened. Uh, verse 15, And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise, stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen. Okay, that's... Yeah. Paul, I want you to tell everybody what's happened here on the road to Damascus today. And of those things in the which I will appear unto thee okay so you've got more revelation coming mm -hmm. yeah. okay look over at second corinthians verse 12 chapter 12 so correct second corinthians is is you know is written probably well it's acts 20 so it's well into his ministry yeah. of course you don't know when this is he's in uh let's say um This is this is a count of when when he gets stoned. Uh, let's just pick it up in verse four. And I believe he's talking about himself here. He says how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. So if that's Paul, and I believe it is. Well, he got some stuff or some information on the road to Damascus. Jesus said, "I'm going to show you some more things." Well, there's a picture of him getting more things. And yeah, this time he actually goes to heaven, goes to the throne room of God. And you can just imagine what that's like, right? They sit yeah. down, and, 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 and you know, in my vision, they sit down over a cup of coffee and some biscuits, <laughs> and Jesus says, hey, I got some more information for you, Paul. Here you go. <laughs> and and then, he, then the other side of that, I always, I always think about this. And Jesus says, okay, Paul, you need to go back. What? Why? I want to stay. I, mean, I always think about that with Lazarus. When Jesus, Jesus is sitting there at the tomb, Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. 
And Lazarus going, I don't want to go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but my point is that progressive revelation. Paul baptized because that was the only program. Right. That was the only program that there was. It, it, it made sense to baptize. But through this through this series of revelations, he stopped. Yeah. Now, there's, there's two thoughts here. Um, that through the understanding of what he was teaching, he thought it through as a mature saint and came to the conclusion that, okay, baptism's not for us today. Because he says, I was not... I wasn't sent to baptize. Yeah. Right. There's no record anywhere where Jesus sent him to baptize. He sent him to right. preach the gospel. Or, the other side, and this is where I come down, is that it was one of the revelations, while he was in Corinth, where Paul said, Jesus said to Paul, excuse me, Paul, baptisms, that program, I don't want you doing it anymore, Paul, because it's not for you today. Because Paul, I never told you to baptize. I sent yeah. you to preach the gospel, not to baptize. Whatever it is, either one, there, Paul did baptize early in his ministry, and then he stopped. And he came to understand because he wasn't sent to baptize. Yeah. He was sent to preach the gospel. And, 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 and that's, a, that's a big thing. That there's, you know, that's why every word in your Bible matters. Yeah. Every word. If you look over at um, uh, verse 17... He says, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. But to preach. That, that word but, that's the opposite, right? I'm not going to work on the motorhome today, but I am going to fix the dryer. There's my great afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> but you see the opposite, right? Well, I'm not going to do one, but I am going to do the other. I, yeah. It excludes the second, in this context yeah. of the word but. The, the second thing excludes the first thing. Mm -hmm. right? It's a powerful statement to make. It is, it especially is. in the Not Jewish nation. Times. I know, that's yeah, huge. Yeah. Think, yeah. About, yeah. think about the, the, the sacred cow that, that, that water baptism is today. Now go back, and anybody, and it does appear that there were quite a few Jews, and, and go back in this day, and people, remember he just said, hey, think about what he said there. Peter said to baptize. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to baptize mm -hmm. Paul who are you yeah. we think it's a big deal now now again this is Gentiles yeah. so maybe he didn't have the weight but, but as he's going forward again go back to who, what authority did he have not to baptize yeah. well because he did have the sign of the apostles you know, even here yeah. he, could, he could speak in tongues he, he tells them yeah. hey I've got all these things I just, I, there are things that are, that are better than what you guys are trying to do <coughs> Okay, we, we, we looked at, at those, those issues in, in Ephesians 4 with, with the one baptism. Right, spiritual. In 1 Corinthians 12, we said we're all baptized by the Holy Spirit into one the one body. body. Yeah. Okay, now we were baptized not by a man in the water, but by the Holy Spirit into the church, the body of Christ. Okay, that clearly is a spiritual issue that's happening. Now people will say, well, it's represented by the water. When it, it, it's, it's not. The water doesn't put you into the body of Christ. Okay. This is something yeah. that, this is, because again, people want to come along in spiritual. Okay, well, yeah. you're spiritually in Christ. Okay, sure. Or positionally, you're in Christ. Okay, yeah. sure. But it's still a reality. You still yeah. are in Christ. When we talk, you know, something, we, or the conference we talked about it. When God looks at you, where does he see you? In Christ. In yeah. yes. Christ. God thinks you're in Christ. Maybe, like he says over in Romans 6, you ought to reckon it to be so as, as well. Um, look over at Galatians 3. Galatians 3. Now, think about this. He, where he talks about this water baptism issue. It's in the Corinthian church that was all wrapped up in the sign gifts, trying to have Israel's program. And in the Galatian church, which they didn't have the, the immorality issues that the Corinthian church did. They were trying to please God, but they were trying to do it according to Israel's doctrines. Here he says, too, for as many as you've been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. No. I'm sorry, what's that reference? Uh, Galatians 3, verse 27. Oh, 
Galatians 3, verse 27. So, we should all know, but what does Colossians 2.10 say? We are complete. We are complete, complete in him. So why? We, what would baptism add to somebody that's complete in Christ? It'll make you more complete. More complete. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love that. Yes, you can be more complete. Yes. Next time we do a puzzle, when we get it done, we'll say, well, how do we get it more? We'll pour water on it and make it more complete. <laughs> it is interesting, isn't it? What does is, what is water baptism do? If you're, if you're the Holy Spirit's already baptized you in Christ and you're now complete in Christ, what does baptism well, do? Well, instead of the water baptism today, we should be proclaiming the spiritual baptism that we have. Mm-hmm. Well, it's piling on another work. Baptism yeah. with water is a work. And then, you know, Paul says, you know, that it, it makes the cross of Christ and no effect. No effect. You know. And... Exactly. <laughs> Come with me to Matthew 3. We're, again, we'll have cause to look at this passage for two different purposes. I just want to look at it for one purpose right now, though. So Paul said there's one baptism over there in Ephesians. <clears throat> look at Matthew 3, verse 10. Verse 11, actually. John the Baptist talking to the Pharisees. He says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Okay, so clearly John believes he's, he is authorized to do a water ceremony, right? There, there's no doubt about that. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, just reading that verse... Does it seem like John thinks that being baptized with the Holy Ghost and with the fire is something that is a spiritual thing because of what he did with the water? No, John thinks that's three different baptisms. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm going to do it with water, guys. Yeah. But he's coming and he's going to do it with something different. He's yeah. not going to tell you, well, when John baptized you into water, then you were baptized with the Holy Spirit and with, and with fire. Yeah. Okay, the fire here, by the way, and is the wrath to come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, people say, oh, I'm ready to be re I'm ready to be baptized with the fire. Oh, no, you are no, not. No. Yeah, the yeah. Pentecostal thinks the baptism of fire is speaking in tongues. Yes, <laughs> the little cloven tongues of Pentecost. Yeah, they're, exactly. They're wrong. Exactly. And and this is there's a good thing here and, and, and there's a bad thing here. But what I want you to see yeah. that there's three there's three baptisms right. in one verse. Mm -hmm. Yep, three in one verse. Okay. Um, <clears throat> come with me to Luke twelve. Now, this will make you think. Oh, yeah. The Lord Jesus Christ speaking in verse 49, Luke 12, 49. Those, are, those people that, that, that want to think that Jesus was just all about peace and love and would have, made, would have been good at Woodstock. Verse 49. <laughs> I am come, come to send fire on the earth. What will I if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how I am straight until it shall be accomplished. What's that baptism? It's baptism unto death. Yeah, he's already had, he's already gotten wet. He's already been baptized yeah. by John. So Two baptisms. You know, one with water by John, and then now a baptism. Unto this death. is baptism in, in, into yeah. death. Yeah. So now we've seen four baptisms. Yeah. Water, Holy Ghost, fire, and now... The death. Yeah. Okay. Look. Go back to First Corinthians ten. Corinthians, what I say? 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did eat all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual 
drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Okay, there's another baptism. Now, there's a group of people that were baptized under Moses uh, that, that, that passed through the sea. So, clearly, he's talking about Israel, right? Yeah. Israel was baptized under Moses at the sea. Okay, there, was an, there were two groups of people there. One group got wet, and one group got would stay dry. Yeah. It's the dry ones that were baptized into Moses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Think about that. So now we've seen, what, six baptisms, five baptisms? I've lost count already. <laughs> this and, is fine. Yeah, and Paul says there's only one. Now, the th- thing we say is the one John talked about said that Jesus was going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. Paul says we're baptized by the Holy Spirit. The, the words matter. Yeah. The words matter. Now you see that they get baptized with the Holy with the Holy Spirit, don't we? At Pentecost. Yes. That's a in, in, in where we're at right now, you see where it says all were baptized unto Moses. Is there any verse anywhere in the Bible that anybody can say where we're baptized unto Paul? No. No. <laughs> and Paul, it, it's been said and and, and, and it is true. Paul is for the body of Christ, really, what Moses is for Israel, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Israel, Israel in the wilderness, looked back at Paul or at Moses. I never caught that before. That they were all baptized into Moses. There. Into Moses. Yeah, I never. Totally now that that that. that comes along yeah. with the issue of the church, which was in the wilderness. Right. Everybody yeah. says right. every church is the same. No, no, no. Yeah. There was a church in the wilderness, and they were baptized. Who, who's Moses? He's the great lawgiver. Yeah. Who's Paul? The great grace giver. Now it's yeah. all it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't get me wrong. Right. We don't worship Paul. But even Paul asked the Corinthians right there, were you baptized in my name? No. The, the, the water baptism says, no. No part. So even those people want because now I brought all of that up to come over and look at Romans 6. Yeah. Was baptism a big deal for for you growing up? Uh, yes. Yeah, sprinkling. Uh, yeah. Okay, because he, he grew up uh, Catholic. Uh, recovering Catholic. Recovering Catholic. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, yeah, and, and they, they sprinkle and they sprinkle babies, right? Uh, the poor, yeah. they dunk babies. They dunk. Okay. It, it, and that's what right. does that mean? What did the priest say? I was seven. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you just don't get all dressed up, make mom happy. I've been there. I've been there. Yes, yeah. this is right there. So look at Romans six and verse three. Know you not that so many of us who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death? Now everybody wants to come along and say this is water. They read water there. But how did we get baptized into Jesus Christ? Spiritually. By the Spirit. But right by the Spirit into the body of Christ. Water doesn't do this. Okay? This is a spiritual issue that's happened. It's an issue of identification. Go back to that. Those people that were identified unto Moses. Were they Moses' people or God's people? God's people. Now, sometimes they'd argue about it, right? God would say, hey... Mo- God would tell Moses, it's people that you brought out, Moses, and Moses said, God, the people that you brought, so they'd argue about it. They didn't, neither one of them really wanted to take possession of them, but they're God's people, right? When they're identified unto Moses, it still wasn't, it still wasn't that, that, that issue of, of, of following, uh, following Moses and what Moses said. Moses, right. they followed, they followed God as Moses told them to. Right. Okay. Uh, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, verse four. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. For we, if we have been planted together in the what likeness of His death, we shall also be in the in the likeness of His resurrection. This is not clearly a, not a water sign. This is a spiritual baptism, where whereas we go from dead to life. Look at down here, verse uh, six. 
knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, yeah. that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Water doesn't do that. No. No. That's a, that's a, a, a real thing that has happened. Now, we don't live like it sometimes, and then you know, you've got to understand there's an standing in state there. But, but that's the reality, is that, that old man, when we, got, when we got baptized into Christ by the Spirit, yeah. not through water, but by the Spirit, yeah. and into Christ, that's a reality, and because of that, we can go live dead to sin. Dead to sin. We can live because that is the re- reality of our identity. It, we can go live out of that. That's what people will tell you. And I've had one guy tell me Bible study. I've rededicated my life to the Lord five times, and all five times I've been baptized. That's why he needs to continue to get baptized because because he's relying on the baptism that water ceremony to actually <laughs> do something in his life. And it didn't work because he had to do it no. five times. You know what Paul says here. Yeah. Knowing, yes, verse knowing. three. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ for baptizing this? There's, there's, a, there's a knowledge issue here. What happens with that? It's a lack of knowledge. We've all said it this morning about about not growing, about being babes. Okay, look. If you don't need a man to baptize you into water, and you can read the Bible for yourself, and I'm not saying don't go to church. I'm saying do go to church. Just go to a church that teaches rightly divided. You can understand the Bible. Yeah. I mean, look. I barely graduated high school, and I only made it through one semester of college. So if I can understand it, anybody can understand it. But it, it's an issue of knowledge. Yeah. And, under, and, and, and reading and understanding that water is not for us. So yeah. I, I do have a question, though. Come back to Matthew 3. Because then people do all kinds of stuff, with, with, with crazy things, right? Well, I know it's not for my salvation, but it's it's... An, an, in, outward, an outward, outward expression of an inward change, or some people believe it actually does something. That you know, you you get baptized, and and, and that's the final step. You you yes, the cross is enough, but you do need to get baptized. It, it does do something. It gets you wet. It gets you wet. <laughs> <laughs> it gets you wet, and it makes you proud. <laughs> look what I did. Yeah, look what I made. Now you I proud. Yeah. the the denomination you come out of is it's a much it, it's. It really is a, a huge, a huge deal there. Maybe more than some some Protestant, but what you get all dressed up, you have the family come to church, and and you do all that. Even all the Protestant religions, right? Yeah. But it also disappoints people who go in expecting to be no. thoroughly changed, yes. and are not. Yes. Yeah. And then they're like, "What's wrong with me? I thought mm-hmm. you know I got mm-hmm. baptized. Yet today I feel the same as yesterday." Exactly. Or they may try for a couple weeks. You know, I've been baptized. I, you know, I can do this, and yeah. then they eventually what, fail. What happens if they sin I mean, that day? Yeah. yeah, like that didn't last long. Gotta get dunked again. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So th- I, I've always had a question, and nobody could, nobody's ever been able to answer the question. So look at Matthew three. Let's just read, read down through this chapter, verse one. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, and this is a water ceremony, saying, "Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand." For this is he that was spoken of the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? You can see what, what, what John's work trying to work out there. Bring forth therefore fruits, meet for repentance. There's a work. There's a work-based gospel that, that John's preaching here. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the lake. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. He that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will truly purge his floor, gather his wheat in the garner, but will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. Just a basic reading of this, you can see the issue with what John's doing is to identify them as the believing remnant in the nation of Israel, so that when, when the wrath that comes, comes in that fire, they go through it. It, 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 clearly, this is about the identification of that true believing remnant that the Old Testament has talked about since the time of Moses. Okay, and he said in yeah. the pathway for Christ. It, exactly, it, John the Baptist is the forerunner. Yeah. The, the, the if you ever wonder about why is verse four in there, 
like Paul had the signs of the apostles and that he could heal and whatnot. John had the sign of the prophets. Go back and read about Elijah and all these prophets. They they wore camel's hair. They wore a leather girdle. So that, that that was his uh, bona fides that, that that he had the authority to baptize them. Right? Okay. But then look at verse thirteen. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan upon unto John to be baptized. Now wait a second. John, go back to verse six. People came to John to be baptized and confess their sins. Right. Okay, then the Pharisees and Sadducees come, and John says, who's warned you to flee from the wrath that comes? So there you can see water baptism is, is to help you flee the tribulation. Not, he says, don't just think that we have Abraham for our father. Okay? Jesus didn't do any of those things. He didn't have to confess his sins. He wasn't in danger of going through the tribulation and being purged out. Okay? Uh, yeah. Verse uh, 14. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. Comest thou to me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so. Suffer, suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. It, it becometh who? Us. Okay? He Jesus got baptized to fulfill all righteousness. Come back to Isaiah 26. The us in that passage, by the way, is John the Baptist, is the Lord Jesus Christ, and all the people that to that point had been had received the baptism of John. That little flock, that believing remnant. They looked at John, because it's John that points out who the Lord Jesus Christ is. The, the, the people that went out to get baptized with water by John, they understood the Old Testament scriptures. They understood Matthew or Isaiah 40 saying the, the yeah. forerunner was coming. That's why there's a description of what John was wearing. They said that John is who God said. God's not going to speak comfortably to us. We need to go out. And John says we need to get identified. He's the forerunner. He's going to tell us who Christ is. We're going to get baptized. And lo and behold, what happens? Here comes Jesus. And Jesus. Yeah. There he is. There's yeah. the Lamb of God. Forgives the sins of the world. Okay. Jesus. And then he says, and John's right. Why am I baptizing you? This, this makes no sense. Jesus. <laughs> None. Well, we have to fulfill all righteousness. Yeah. Verse chapter 20, Isaiah 26, and there are many of these, it's just one. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 1. In that day, this song shall be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. They're going, this is the kingdom. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. That will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Because he trusteth, trusteth in thee, trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah's everlasting strength. The us that Jesus is saying back there is the us of, of the people, this righteous nation in Isaiah 26 too. They've been identified, they've been righteous. They said, yeah, John the Baptist is the forerunner. There's the Lamb of God. I'm baptized, I'm identified. I am going to bring forth meat, works meet for repentance. I am going to endure to the end. I am going to walk by faith, not by sight. Jesus got identified with that nation. It wasn't for the remission of sins. It wasn't because Jesus had to display to his nation. He, he had a, a change of who he was inside. It was to be identified with his people. I, I don't have the scripture with me. You can go back and you see Israel's going to be called, the, the, the nation, the, the, the believing remnant is going to be called the Lord his righteousness. You know who else is going to be called that? That's the name for Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's how, just like we're identified, like, like the bones and the marrows yeah. with, with, with the church and body of Christ, so we, you can't be said, he, he can't deny us because he can't deny himself. Yeah. It's the same way they're going to have, the, the, the name of Israel is going to be the name of the Lord yeah. in that day. To me, it's almost unfathomable that he's, he's going to do that with, with, with man and women on earth. But as they go into that kingdom, they're going to, have that that the law word and they're the new covenant yeah. we've been talking about is going to be written on our hearts so they will still have the ability to sin but they will yeah. not do it everybody yeah. thinks with well, the new covenant and then they become robots no 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 they're going to know they just won't yeah. he's going to cause them right. because it's written on their hearts and they're going to think so why was Jesus baptized to fulfill all righteousness yeah not because of remission of sins not the not 
all or crazy they, things that people come up with? An example. You did it as an example. That's what they say. And it's like, well, no. It, it, it's just to fulfill all right. yeah. righteousness. Yeah, fulfill righteousness. An example there. Right. And, 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 yeah. and so in the moment there, go back and read, uh, in, in the moment there in Matthew 3, look at verse 2. <clears throat> what is the issue of the righteousness being fulfilled? Why is it time for all righteousness to be filled? Why is God speaking comfort to his nation again? Why is John the Baptist on the scene? Because the kingdom of heaven the kingdom is at of hand. Heaven is at hand. And they're going to be, to be a, a nation of priests. Yes. And priests have to be baptized. Perfect. They have to yeah. be clean. Jesus is going to be high priest of yeah. Israel. And he needs to be baptized, right? He had, he had no sin. Why? It's why? All- does yeah, he need to be baptized? Yeah, prophecy being fulfilled. Yeah, prophecy being fulfilled. Yeah, yeah they're so. going to be a baptized nation of priests in the, in the future. There you go. Baptized yeah. nation of the word priests. And it's very interesting. Now, we're, we're going to stop here. And the next week, I want to talk about the resurrection. We'll talk, And then we'll come back and look at baptism in two weeks and finish it up. But they were to be a nation of priests. So they yes. had to be baptized. Do you know how many times in your Paul in your King James Bible uses the word priest, priesthood, priestly, any version of that zero zero now the new versions do take one i think is in romans 14 where the king james says minister and they change it to priest Ooh. Oh, there's a doctrinal reason for that though because the, the you, you if you want to teach the doctrine of the priesthood of the believer yeah. and if a priest need to be baptized which in fact they do as yeah. they deny that it that there was ever any old testament and you go back and read about yeah. the sprinkling yeah. then some point you got to get the church of body of christ to be a priest yeah Right. Isn't that something? That's why. Yeah. And again, James. again, you don't. I didn't study it, and yeah. John was right. You you never want to build a doctrine on silence. But it's very. It, there are there are three books I think it is that that ta- that have the word priest the most times. Of course, number one is Leviticus, yeah. right? The priest does this. The priest does that. Priest yeah, that. Yeah. So that's yeah. set it up. No, I, I think number two and everything. Maybe I could be wrong. The book of Acts and the book of Hebrews. Yeah. And what do they bookend? Paul. So you have all this mention of the yeah. priest in Acts, all this mention of the book in Hebrews, and the 13 books yeah. between, not one time. Not one time. Not one time. Because it's not a doctrine for the church and body of Christ. We are not the priests of God. The blessings yeah. of God do not flow through us out to the nations. We have the ministry of reconciliation yeah. to go out and tell people, you need to believe Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day for your sins. Bam, you get put in the church and body of Christ. And wow, you got a promise coming that is just incredible. It's different Amen. from the Israel's program. Right, and, and the priests are supposed to represent men to to God. That's right, you know, and, and what? Who who do we? If we're a priesthood of believers, do we priest to each, each other? Right, you know, and what what is it? Uh, uh, second, is it second? I always get the fifteen verses. Fifteen is confused. Is it second or first? Second Timothy two fifteen. Is uh, no, maybe once I'm looking for uh, uh, where, he, where 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 he says, but you know, we where Paul doesn't say high priest anywhere, but I think it might be. Oh, yeah, yeah, First uh, Timothy 2, 5. For there is one God yes. and one mediator between God yes. and men. Yes. The man, yeah, Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus. He doesn't say the, the high priest. No. You know, Christ right. Jesus, you know, because he's, you know, and if he was going to say that, he would have gotten would have been definitely the place been to, the priest. This, yes. this place to say it's it. It's not you know, there. Right. You know, and. It's knowing yeah. your Bible. It's all yeah. in here. Yeah. yeah absolutely. You would we, we, you don't go to a man today to confess your sins. First of all, you shouldn't be confessed. You don't need right. to confess your sins anyhow. But you don't go to a man to confess yeah. sins. Look, yeah. he's already sitting at the right hand of God making intercession yep. for us. Yeah. Yep. God has been satisfied. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we do thank you for the morning to come, time to come to fellowship and fellowship around your word. And we have more to look at this. We, we, we do thank you that you did have the Apostle Paul go through and, and, and spend time explaining this to us and it just fascinates me that the the issue here in in Corinth 2,000 years later is still an issue issue for us today my prayer for all of us is we just rest in your word let your word be the truth in in our lives Um, just understand it rightly divided and understand that it is the final authority again we thank you for your love and for your grace in your son's precious name amen. amen 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 Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.